uh, Trump is a whisker away from the presidency. How is this possible? Right? How, how is it that this guy, uh, he's been found guilty by a jury of his peers of raping a woman. I realize guilty is not the right word in a, uh, uh, what do you call it, civil uh, case, but you get it. He's a traitor who has embraced foreign dictators, uh, particularly Vladimir Putin, who just sentenced an American to prison while actively bombing a Democratic American ally. He's a convicted criminal who stole money from a children's cancer charity and scammed students out of millions of dollars. He tried to end American democracy by force. Like Hitler justifying the Holocaust, he claims some Americans are genetically inferior, and he's a whisker away from the presidency. How is this even possible? Well, I submit that you can trace it all back to dark money. Ever since Citizens United legalized literally unlimited contributions to the new category of political action committees that created super PACs, just in the past 15 months, uh, over $8.6 billion has been raised for this year's federal campaigns with 65% of that money, $5.6 billion, running through PACs. Jimmy Carter on this program said that Citizens United violates the essence of what? And it made America a great country in its political system. Now it's just an oligarchy with unlimited political bribery. And he's right. But it's even worse than Carter imagined. I mean, you, you, and it's affecting public policy, by the way. When Donald Trump asked you order banning TikTok, now it never went into effect because TikTok sued and it's been tied up in court ever since. But uh, you know, he was actually right. I mean, <laughs> it's like the old pr proverb that even a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, you know, occasionally Trump is right. Uh, and he was right about this. But then the large, the 64th richest person in the world, uh, worth an estimated $40 billion, uh, Jeff Yaz, uh, visited with Donald Trump and suddenly... Donald Trump changed his mind. Why? Well, Yaz holds $15 billion in ByteDance stock, the, the company that owns TikTok. That's 7% of the company's outstanding stock. And after that meeting between Trump and Yaz, uh, apparently, Trump reversed his opposition to TikTok. As ABC News said, the former president has been rebuilding his relationship with the GOP mega donor, who reportedly has a major financial stake in the popular social media platform. Right. Now, back in 2012, Jeff Yaz's, uh, who lives in Pennsylvania, by the way, his entire political donation portfolio was a mere $78,000. This year, he has dropped $80 million, according to the All Eyes on Yaz campaign, into, uh, in support of Republicans just over the past few months. He spent more in Pennsylvania, according to All Eyes on Yaz, than the top 10 corporate PACs combined. I mean, you and I have one vote, right? And we are limited to giving $3,300 to any one political campaign. Pretty much every penny beyond that falls into the category of dark money, which, you know, is the result of five corrupt Republicans on the U.S. Supreme Court making it super easy for billionaires to give lavish gifts and support to Supreme Court justices and members of Congress. I mean, <laughs> their Citizens United decision blew open the doors to this. And, and I mean, you know, had not Clarence Thomas been the deciding vote on this after having been, you know, uh, well bribed, shall we say, by multiple right wing billionaires, one bought him a new van, uh, you know, a new RV, another one has been flying him around the world in private jets and giving him, you know, luxury cruises and paying for his mother's house and putting his son through school or his adopted, so whatever the kid is, his nephew um, that he's been taking care of. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. The year of 2010, which was the year Citizens United was decided, but, you know, it didn't really sink in until subsequent years. The year 2010, the total amount that all of Amer America's billionaires together spent on politics in 2010 was $31 million. 0 0.031 billion. $31 million. In 2012, post Citizens United, it went to 231 billion, a uh, million, and in 2014, it went to 600 million. Uh, it was also 600 million for 200 for 2018. But then came 2020, 
when there was a very real chance that Trump would renew his or continue his tax cuts for billionaires. And uh, the billionaires of America, keep in mind, in 2010, they spent $31 million on all elections nationwide. In 2020, they spent $2 billion $362 million. I mean, just think about that. It's breathtaking. Americans for Tax Fairness reports, the report finds that almost 40% of all billionaire campaign contributions made since 1990 occurred during the 2020 season. Now, this is from a report that precedes this year. And these are not expenditures. These are investments. These billionaires are buying politicians. And they're able to do it. I mean, you know, just consider the, the, the report finds that um, billionaires had a lot more money to give politicians and political causes in 2020 as their collective wealth jumped by nearly a third or over $900 billion to $3.9 trillion between the March beginning of the pandemic and the month before Election Day of 2020. Since then, uh, as of October 2021, they were worth $5.1 trillion. And, uh, you know, it's just gone up from there. Political ad spending, according to NBC, is going to reach $10 billion this year. $10 billion. Keep in mind, it, before, before, before Citizens United, it was $31 million. $10 billion. When Thomas Jefferson was the U.S. envoy to France and was living in Paris, uh, uh, this was the year after the Constitution was written, 1778, um, John Adams wrote him a letter that December, December 6th, uh, arguing that Jefferson, Jefferson was afraid that a president might become a strong man. And frankly, that's exactly what happened with the John Adams presidency, but that's a whole other story. But anyhow, he was afraid of a strong man president. Adams, on the other hand, was afraid of oligarchy of rich people. And this is what John Adams wrote to Thomas Jefferson. He wrote, you are afraid of the one, I of the few. We agree perfectly that the many should have a full, fair, and perfect representation. You are apprehensive of monarchy, I of aristocracy. And if Trump gets elected this year, we're going to have both. You're going to have a president who's functionally a king, who will have, you know, those kinds of powers granted him by the Supreme Court and that he will simply seize himself. And you will have a group of oligarchs, you know, who basically will run the country. This election could be America's last stand against oligarchy, against our country becoming like Hungary or Russia. And, you know, like to paraphrase Jim Morrison, they got the money, but we got the numbers. <laughs> we got to turn those numbers out. Billionaire funded Curtis Yarvin, you know, J.D. Vance's favorite philosopher, said we should just all get over our dictator phobia. Right. Vote. Make sure, double check your voter registration at vote.gov and be sure to vote this year. It's 16 minutes past the hour.